our dear viewers and listeners. We greet you all in the precious and wonderful name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. This is the day the Lord has made. And we shall rejoice. And we shall be glad in it. We welcome you to today's Bible study. When we look at depth, into the word of God that is joy giving that is life breathing that is so wonderful that we lose description of what it does. It provides health. It transforms lives. And your life is not going to be the same after today's broadcast. Invite somebody to join us and let's pray as we get into this wonderful word of life. Let's pray. Father, we, we thank you for your presence. Yes, Lord. We thank you for your glory, mm. for your power, yes, Lord. and your majesty. Mm. Holy Spirit, we yield to your leading and guidance. Yes, Lord. Have your way today. Yes, Lord. Change hearts, mm. touch hearts, mm. heal, yes, Lord. raise, mm. resurrect, mm. deliver, mm. protect. Mm. There is nothing we can do without you, Heavenly Father. Nothing, Lord. Lord. For we yield all that we are to your yes, power Lord. and authority. Yes, Lord. That you manifest Christ. Yes, Lord. Reveal Jesus to us. Yes, Lord. That at the end of it all, mm. only him alone will be manifested. Yes, Lord. To this we pray, believing and trusting in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Today we are back to the book of Romans. Chapter 5. As we conclude this section on the message of the benefits of justification. Let's read from verse 1 to verse 5. This is what the Bible says. Therefore, Having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom also we have access by faith into this grace into which we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. And not only that, but we also glory in tribulation, knowing that tribulation produces perseverance and perseverance character and character hope. Now hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured into our hearts by the Holy Spirit who has given to us. In just those five lines, we see the five benefits that come to the believer who has been justified by faith in Jesus Christ. And there are such wonderful promises. They are not to be cherry-picked. No, the Bible says, keeps on telling you, and, and not only only that and this. And so what are the five? We saw previously the first one is that we have peace with God. The second one is that we have access to the presence of God. And this is by grace. The Bible calls it access into the grace in which we stand. The third benefit that we have is the hope in God. 
Hope is the fuel to the heart. When we are without hope, we call that condition hopelessness. And so many people are in hopeless situations because we placed our hope in the wrong things. We placed our hope in the wrong person. But to those that are justified by faith in Jesus Christ, our hope rests in the wrong and that rock is the Lord of glory. Our hope is in God. The fourth blessing is the love of God. Oh, how people all over the world long for love. We long for the validation of love as we grow up. The love from our parents. The love from our peers. We long for the love from our spouses. But listen to what has happened here. The love of God, which transcends anything that we know of, has been poured out into our hearts. God has poured out his love into our hearts as a result of us being justified by faith. And the next one, which we'll look at today, is the Holy Spirit. And the Bible tells us in verse 5 that now hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out into our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given to us. Now look at what is happening. I often love to see um, these movies or events when people want to get help across to areas that cannot be accessed. Many times what they do they will use the air transport and they will drop this aid. Although it is not an accurate way of depositing this, by making an airdrop, because you don't know whether it will accurately reach to the people it is supposed to reach. The goal in many times is to ensure that at least there is something dropping to them. But look at what is happening here. The love of God that has been poured into us, God did not just drop it there. God put it in a container. And the container is the Holy Spirit. God himself carried his love and deposited it into the life of the believer. So the Spirit moves and sets up home within us. And the purpose of that is that it just doesn't come to drop the aid that we need, which is the love of God, and he departs. No. He brings the love and he settles within us. So he begins to distribute 
everything that we need that pertains to life and godliness. Not from outside of us, but from within us. So the Holy Spirit is resident in us. He knows everything that goes on within us. And there he meets every need. He distributes to make sure that we are sufficiently furnished for every good work. I, I liken this to an account we have in the Bible. Moses Musa. went up to the mountain and there 40 days and 40 nights he was in the presence of God. And when he came down the mountain, his face shone. The glory of God was being reflected on his very face. That a veil had to be covered over his face. Because he had been in the very presence of God. But wait a minute. Through the Holy Spirit, God has come down. Now we don't go to the mountain to meet him. Through justification, he has been given to us. Now he dwells within us in the life of every believer. He dwells. And it is from that base that he acts as governor in our lives, leading us, directing us, and ensuring that we live our lives to the glory of God the Father, the Holy Spirit. Thank you for what you do in the lives of ordinary men. God comes in an ordinary life to make an extraordinary example of what a life surrendered to Christ will be. And my prayer for you that is watching us, that is listening to us, is that you live a life that is surrendered and you will see what God will do in you, through you, and with you. Now look at what the text says. The text says that the love of God has been poured out within our hearts through the Holy Spirit who was given to us. I want you to note the pronoun used here. It doesn't say what the Holy Spirit, what. it doesn't use a what here. So the Holy Spirit is not a what. It is not an it. The Holy Spirit is not a force. The Holy Spirit is not an impersonal energy. He is described as who. He is a person. A person much like Jesus Christ. He has all the attributes of personhood. You see, for many of us, when we talk about a person, you think about the body. The attributes of a person is not the body. The attributes of a person are attributes like being intelligent, having a mind, having a will, having emotions. So, emotions, will, and mind do not belong to a rock. They do not belong to a force. 
So we, the Bible tells us, have the mind of the Spirit. The Bible tells us that we can grieve the Spirit, which points to Him being emotional. The Bible tells us that the Spirit gives gifts as He wills, which speaks to His will. So what we need to understand that to every believer in Jesus Christ, you are given the Holy Spirit. So he's in us every single day of our lives. He's here to empower you. Why to empower you? Because Christian living cannot be relieved to the measure that God desires without divine empowerment. So the Holy Spirit comes to empower us, to provide us with whatever we need to live. So look at what the scripture says. It says the Holy Spirit who was given. So it is not you giving. You who believes receives. In a certain sense, you are the passive person here. God is the active person. We do not earn the Holy Spirit. He is God's gift to us. He is God's gift to everyone that believes in Jesus Christ. And if you do not have the Holy Spirit, then you have not believed on Jesus Christ. Look at what the Bible says in Romans chapter 8 and verse 9. I know when we get to chapter 8, we see it deeper. But look at what he says. He says, if anyone, and this does not not discriminate. So, so, so this is an all-inclusive verse. It says if anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, he does not belong to him. The evidence that you belong to Christ, the evidence that Christ claims ownership of your life, the seal of ownership, if I may use that word, where he says, you belong to me, is the Holy Spirit. And the Bible goes on to tell us, verse 11, it says, if the, Holy, if the Spirit of him, talking about the Holy Spirit, who raised Jesus from the dead, dwells in you, dwells in you. He is present in your life on an ongoing basis. He has set a permanent residence in your life and says he who raised Jesus from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. So the empowerment, the life that any believer will get comes from the Holy Spirit. It is him that gives life. It is him that brings newness of life to you. It is him that removes everything that is dead within you and connects you to God. And therefore you can now open your mouth and refer to 
God as Abba Father. So without the Holy Spirit, there is no way you make reference to God as family. So I meet a lot of people today. And when they are referring to God, they are referring to him as the God of so-and-so, the God of so-and-so. The, the, the evidence of this is they lack the Holy Spirit because it is the Holy Spirit who testifies with your spirit that you are a child of God. It is the Holy Spirit that brings that enlightenment to you and draws you closer to the Father that you no longer now refer to him as the God of so and so you call him my father. Oh, how wonderful that every one of us, irrespective of whether you have an earthly father or not, God qualifies to be your father. Desires that you know him as father. A father who loves, Tata, a father who gives, Tata, and you respond to the love of God by calling him father, Abba, Abba. daddy, Tata. Papa, Tata. and this comes to us because we are justified by faith. What is Paul trying to show us here? Paul is here bringing us through a progression of truth of what has happened to us now that we have believed. So we see that now we have been justified by faith. And we see the benefits one after the other, one added to the other, that come to us when we place our faith in Jesus Christ. And now, having been given the Holy Spirit, he moves on to another truth that we will see in chapter 6, which is our sanctification. So, look at what he says in chapter 8. He, he talks about God foreknowing us. And, and he did not stop at foreknowing us. He predestined us. And he did not predestine us. He says those he predestined, he called. And those he called, he justified. And those that he justified, he glorified. And we will see this progression of truth that happens to every believer. Not some believers, but every believer who comes to the faith in Jesus Christ. We see the fifth benefit, which is the gift of the Holy Spirit. He is an amazing person. He is the reason we come to the faith in the first place. He moves the preacher. He moves the one that brings the message of good news. Empowers him or her to preach this message with power and impact. And he then moves to you who is hearing this message. He convicts you of your sin. And he shows you that without Jesus Christ, none of us meets God's standard. We have all come short. He then reveals to us of the judgment that be 
comes before us. When we don't place our faith in Jesus Christ as Savior. What would happen to us if we died with, without Jesus Christ? And why does he do that? To bring us to that place of repentance. To that place where we confess our sins. To that place place where we place our faith in what Jesus has done on our behalf. And when we do that, we receive the gift of salvation. And having received the gift of salvation, the Holy Spirit then moves in our lives to those dead situations of our lives. And he regenerates us. He recreates in us a new being. And then we become alive and sensitive to the spiritual themes of God. He then baptizes us as believers. Look at what Peter says. And this happens to everyone. This is not to a selective few. This is to everyone who believes in Jesus Christ. And this is not a new message. This is the message from the very beginning. When Peter delivered the first sermon on the day of Pentecost, and the men asked, what is it that we shall do? In Acts chapter 2, verse 38, Peter said, repent and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. And then he adds, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. That means there is a giver. You are a receiver. But I love what verse 39 says. It says, for the promise is to you and to your children and to all who are afar off. Afar off, even where you are right now in your room. As many as the Lord our God will call. You see, those he calls, he justifies. And as a benefit of justification, we receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. That divine empowerment to every believer. That power that comes to us directed by the Father's will to empower us so that our lives now witness of the glory of God. Our lives now bear witness to who we have believed in. And the scriptures encourage us that even after we have received the Holy Spirit on a regular basis, we ask to be feared. When we feel depleted, when we feel we need strength, when we feel to be, we need to be replenished, he is not far away. He is within you. Ask him to fill you up. Ephesians 5.18. So his work that he does is only the work that the divine can do. It is unique that he dwells in the lives of everyone and he lives there for a purpose. In the few minutes that we have, we just have to go through what is it that the Holy Spirit does now that he dwells in us. Number one, he is our helper. 
So, John chapter 16 and verse 7. Jesus states it this way. He says, nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. But if I depart, I will send him to you. So the helper, the paraclete, the advocate is the Holy Spirit. Jesus says, as long as he's here physically, it is not to your advantage. But it is to your advantage if I go. Because if I go, then I will send the Holy Spirit. The promise of the Father has come. Why? Because Jesus died and rose again. And having gone to the Father, he did not leave us without a help. He went and sent him to us. The Comforter has come. The helper has come. The divine help that you need is here with you. It is the Holy Spirit in us, helping us, empowering us to live a life that flourishes, to live a life that radiates the goodness and the glory of God. So you see, when your flesh tries to fight and have ascendancy over the the spirit, instead of fighting the flesh, call on the Holy Spirit. It's the precious Holy Spirit. Take control over my life, over every faculty of my being. He's here for such moments. He's here to ensure that you are empowered, that you are sustained, that you are energized, that you are on track. Therefore, do not hesitate to call upon him. He's here as your helper. He's not just here as your helper. He has a role to play to ensure that the old nature is done away with so that you live in the newness of life. Look at what Paul tells us in 1 Corinthians. Chapter 6, from verse 9. 9 to verse 11. The Bible says, he asks a question, says, do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? And he says, do not be deceived. Neither the fornicators, nor the idolaters, nor the adulterers, nor the homosexuals, nor the sodomites, nor thieves, nor the covetous, nor the drunkards, nor the revilers, nor the extortioners will inherit the kingdom of God. So all these are acts, are acts of godlessness, unrighteous acts. They are acts characteristic of everyone that does not meet the justice requirements of God. And how do we meet the justice requirements of God? By placing our faith in the one who is righteous, Jesus Christ. And that is when we become the righteousness of God. Verse 11 is where I want to place the emphasis. This is what he says. He says, and such were some of you. 
Era bwe mutina mwe bwe mwali abamu kumwe but you were washed na ye mwana azibwa but you were sanctified na ye mwato kuzibwa but you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus ne mwago bwako musango gwa mwe mulinye lya Yesu Kristo and by the spirit of our God era okuita muyo gwa katonda when we talk about sanctification we twogera kukutukuzibwa we talk about being set apart as sacred tutegeza that is why those that have believed in Jesus Christ when we read the Bible are referred to as saints they have been set apart as sacred so the Holy Spirit proceeds to do a work in your life so that you are separated from your old nature you become a new person. So every entanglement of sin and unrighteous living are separated from you. So you are changed inside out. Not outside in. He works inside out. And, and why is he doing this? Because he is molding you into an image. And the image is of the risen Christ. You see, this is what the Bible tells us. It says, Beloved, you are the children of God. First John 3. And it says, when Christ Christo, our Lord shall appear. We shall be like him. How would we be like him? We we'll be like him because of what the Holy Spirit is doing on the inside of us. When God says, be ye holy as I am holy, he is not setting you up for the fall. No, he has placed the Holy Spirit on the inside of you. His characteristic is holiness. And he will guide you. Look at what he says in 2 Corinthians 3.18. He says, but we all with unveiled face beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord and this is the Lord Jesus Christ. He says, are being transformed into the same image. From glory to glory. And he says, just as by the Spirit of the Lord. So the Spirit of the Lord is molding every one of us that has believed on the Lord Jesus into the image of Christ. I, 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 one time I was reading about the people that were doing the smelting. So how would they know that they have now smelt this gold and it is pure? This is what the goldsmith would do. He would look into this God. And the moment he's able to see his image, oh, that God has been purified. So even we are being purified, even we are being sanctified, and we will behold his glory as in a mirror. And we are transformed to that image that we have. Behold. 
the image of the love of our lives. The one who gave himself for us. The one who did bleed. That we who are bleeding will be made whole. The one who came down. That God may have a bigger family. Who include me and you. The Holy Spirit. So he does not just sanctify us. But he is also here. To help us. To do the will of the Father. He's here to be a guide. The, there's a portion in the scripture that says that you shall hear a voice saying to you, There is the way walking in it. That voice that we hear, that voice is the voice of the Spirit leading us on the narrow way. Who is Jesus Christ? For broad is the way that leads to destruction. But narrow is the road that leads to eternal life. And there be few that find it. On the broad way, you don't have to find it because that's where we all are. It is finding the narrow way and maintaining this journey on the narrow way. It is the Holy Spirit, oh precious Holy Spirit, that leads us, that guides us, that shows us. For you out there who does not know the will of the Father, oh precious Holy Spirit, guide him. Ask him to guide you. Ask him to lead you. Ask him to empower you through this journey of faith and oh how wonderful it will be. It is not a journey that he just gives you and leaves you there. It is not a journey of powerlessness. It is a journey of empowerment. The Bible tells us that it is the Holy Spirit who gifts us for ministry. He gifts you on this journey. He, he not only just gifts you as an individual, but he gifts many others. And he draws these many others together with you. Then together he guides you. So his guidance is twofold. There is the individual guidance of the individual. And there is the corporate guidance that he gives. But in guiding, he also empowers. Look at what he says in 1 Corinthians 12. He says there are diversities of gifts. But the same spirit. It is him that gives them. It says there are differences of ministries. But the same Lord. It says there are diversities of activities. But it is the same God who works all in all. And, and in verse 7, he emphasizes that the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. So the gift he gives you or the gift he gives me is not for my self-aggrandization. No, it is to profit all of us. It is to profit you. It is to profit the body of Christ. And he says for to one is given the word of wisdom through the spirit to another the word of knowledge through the same spirit another 
mulala. Faith by the same spirit to another gifts of his by the same spirit to another the working of miracles to another prophecy to another discerning of spirits to another different kinds of tongues and to another interpretation of tongues but one and the same spirit works all the things distributing to each one he gives to each one individually as he wills he sees the bigger picture and this great God begins to give to each one gifts he imparts to each believer gifts as the need is. So we receive because he has given. It is so sad today that there are people who are gifted and they when they begin to talk about the gifts that God has given them, it's, it's like they have earned them. That there is no price. He has given, he has given to you for the benefit of the body. You are where you are because you have been given. Paul asks this question. He says, what do you have that you are not given? So if you are given, then why boast? I, I meet a lot of ill-informed people who says I am where I am because I have paid the price. You have not paid the price. The only thing you did was to obey. That is all you did and you received. So God has put this inside of you. He has given you this gift. And let me put this. Every believer in Jesus Christ has a gift. Every believer. And this gift that you have been given has been placed on the inside of you. So nobody steals your gift. No. <laughs> no, no, no one can steal that gift. This is God given and he places it on the inside of you. So it's not like a cape that can be stolen or a shirt. This has been placed on the inside. No wonder Paul says we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellence of power the excellence of power may be of God and not of us. In this earthen vessel lies the treasure lies the gift that the Holy Spirit has given to you as an individual. And what is the purpose? So that you become God's instrument in the kingdom. So that you become a vessel of honor in the house of God. We also saw that the Holy Spirit imparts on us love. For you to get the depth of this, you need to look at the previous Bible study. Then you will know that God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. This is not the love for God. No, this is the love of God. The love that bears God's character. The love that can only be attributed 
attributed to God. There are several words of Greek that are used to describe love. One is eros, which is the sexual love. There is toje, which is the fellowship love. But the love that we are talking about, or there is phileo, which is the love that the parents can give to you. But there is the agape love. The love that has no condition. That love has been poured in our hearts. The Holy Spirit does not just give you a dot. He pours out in that love in us. And Paul tells us that these three Faith, hope, and love. These abide. Everything else is temporary. These three abide. And do you know what? Through justification, you have all these three. Hallelujah to the Lord. Lama The Holy Spirit gives us hope. Look at what he says in Romans 15. Verse 13, he says, may the God of hope, the God of hope, fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that by the power of the Holy Spirit, you may abound in hope. Hope is the fuel for your soul. Like diesel-powered car or petrol-powered car needs fuel. You also need the fuel of the soul. It is that hope that carries you through the trials of life, through the tribulations that come your way, knowing that this too shall pass, knowing that this is not the end, and you come out of this better than you went into it. Who gives the hope? The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is also our teacher. He provides us with the insight. Look at what Jesus says in John 14, 26. He says, but the helper, the Holy Spirit, but the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I have said to you. So the Holy Spirit comes to us, not just to empower us, but also to bring to our remembrance the words of Christ, the life-giving words spoken by our Lord. Why are these words important? Because they are able to build us up. They are able to give us a hope. They are able to give you and I an inheritance. Among all of them that are sanctified. So without the word of God, you have nothing. And the one who guides you through this word, who brings to your remembrance the appropriate word of the season, he is the Holy Spirit. He reminds you of what you need to do so that when the enemy comes against you like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord raises a standard. How? 
she reminds of the word of God. And that word beats the shield of faith. So when the darts of the enemy come against you, oh, you have the right word for the season that will quench all those fiery darts of the enemy. What is the enemy speaking to you? Right you have the Holy Spirit on the inside of you. He will guide you into this truth. He will remind you and you will be able to raise the shield of faith. And then you open your mouth and the word of God that has been in your spirit which is the sword of the spirit will come out and will be able to decimate everything the enemy has put before you. Oh Holy Spirit, we thank you for being here with us. Oh, then there is the biggie, the big word. He guides us in prayer. Yeah. Oh, look at what he says in Romans 8.26. He says likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. I know there are moments when we want to pray, but the, the flesh is just too weak. It is unwilling. Go ask the Spirit to carry you. Uh, ask Him to carry you. Ask Him to take you to that place. To empower you, to strengthen you. And look at what happens. He says, for we know not how to, what to pray. Or how we ought to pray. But the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groanings too deep for us or with groanings which cannot be uttered. He's here as your intercessor. You say, I get baffled these days when I meet believers who want to break spiritual realms so that they can have access to the Father. You have not known what you have. You have the Spirit on the inside of you, God inside you, interceding on your behalf. When you don't know how to pray or how to make your prayer worthy, He makes intercession on your behalf. And do you know what? You have another intercessor with the Father who is the Lord Jesus Christ seated at the right hand of the Father making intercession for the saints on, on behalf of the saints. He's interceding with the Father. So there is an uninterrupted channel the Holy Spirit in you to Jesus at the right hand of the Father to God the Father this is, God. This is a God channel it is an uninterrupted network open 24 hours, 7 days a week. Sometimes you don't even know the right words to speak. But thanks be to the Holy Spirit. He builds you up and then He works through you and utters the words that are appropriate for the season. Oh, and then finally, it is the Holy Spirit that empowers you to witness for Jesus Christ. I, when Jesus was about to leave, he makes this promise. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 1 and verse 8. He says, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. In other words, before the Holy Spirit, you are powerless. When he comes, then power comes. You see, I see people trying to go out to places to seek for power. No, the power is in the Holy Spirit. He is the source of power. Jesus says, you shall receive power. Dunamis. After the Holy Spirit has come. When the Holy Spirit has come. 
So now that he has come, this is the good news. Power has come. The Holy Spirit, and he says, this power has a purpose. This is not power to show off how mighty you are. No, this is power with a purpose. This is the power to witness. And it is given to every believer. He says, you shall be witnesses of me in Jerusalem, in Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. That was before he left. That power is available to you, the believer. Why? Because the Holy Spirit has been given to you. And he is the source of this power. So, you don't have to be weak because the power of God is resident in you. You say, I liken it to a car. You will never know how much power a car has until you study it. And then when you hear the sound, then those who are knowledgeable will tell you this is how much horsepower but you will never know how much power is resident in that hood until you start the engine. In the same way, you as a believer, you will never know how much power has been placed on the inside of that vessel until that vessel is availed for the master's use. So to you out there, that does not know the Holy Spirit. He comes to us. He is given to us as one of the benefits of justification. And if you are there and you don't know the Holy Spirit, you are not Christ's. That is the sad news I bring to you. You don't belong to Christ. But then I bring the good news. Today, Right now, where you are, you can belong to Christ by believing in Jesus Christ and his finished work for us on the cross and his death, burial, and resurrection. And the righteousness of God will be imputed to you. God will justify you. And one of the benefits of this justification is that you will receive the Holy Spirit. Today, now, where you are, why don't you make this prayer from the bottom of your heart? Not from your mouth, from your heart. God sees the heart. He knows the heart. If you open up your heart and invite me, it will make all the difference. So why don't you say this prayer from the bottom of your heart? It's a God of heaven and earth, creator of the universe. I thank you for the love that you have for me. I am a sinner who needs a Savior. And I believe that Jesus Christ was born, lived, died on the cross for my sins, and was raised from the dead. Therefore, Lord Jesus, I invite you in my life as my Lord and as my Savior. Take ownership of everything about my life. Guide me, Lord. Fill me with the Holy Spirit and lead me that my life will be a manifestation of the goodness, the greatness, and the glory of God. Thank you, Lord. Today I declare that I am born again. Thank you for saving me. Amen. Now, if you say that prayer from the bottom of your heart, you have been wonderfully saved. That's the good news. 
Mm. Now you have a belong. You belong to God. And the Spirit of God has come into your life to dwell. There is a number on the screen. Please call that number. Somebody on the other side will give you the first instructions on this wonderful journey of faith. To you who have believed in Jesus Christ, this is the message I leave with you. We have the Holy Spirit on the inside of us to help us, to empower us, to to be effective witnesses of Jesus Christ. Turn that engine on. And God richly bless you as you go witnessing for him. From Dominion Church, we're saying shalom. Thanks for being with us. Until we meet again, God richly bless you. Shalom. Shalom.